the wave. Once more, the heat on the back of my neck, early June, and I am moving to and through my own unwhistled tune across the parking lot to my car, a bop in my step despite my hip, a bottle of wine in one paper bag, a block of cheese in the other, and for a moment I'm letting myself feel good in spite of everything. And everything is a lot these days. A new war in Europe, the virus, our breed, the opioid crisis, my father's cancer, his dementia, Roe v. Wade, in no particular order. So much you half expect the Ohio to run red and skies to fill with locusts. Every new story competing like a sign, a signal, a siren among sirens. It almost makes you want to remove the batteries from your fire alarms. And in this small Appalachian city, there is always a siren, always something to alarm. So much that it feels bad to feel good, even for a second. Everything is bright and the sun is in your eyes and your lips feel loose. The windows are alive like signal fires calling out to you. But today, right now, I am generous, loose with summer. And even the scent of exhaust is sweet. And if I could, I would uncork the bottle right here in the street and pass it to anyone who asks. I'd put Curtis on my car stereo, turn up the bass, and let it play until my battery died. And night came on, and I had to wobble home drunk. I'd grab the hand of the old woman in the bright sunflower shift and dance her away from her walker. Let her lean against my body as we rock my nose pressed to the top of her head. But there's never a corkscrew around when you need it, is there? So I smile at a child. She smiles back, and we both ignore her father's stare, his what you looking at, until I realize I'm still wearing a mask and tear it off like a boy pulling off his shirt to dive into a public pool. And maybe this is why the strung out woman in the Hello Kitty hoodie walks up when she does, arms wrapped around herself. And I can tell she's been using maybe pills, maybe horse. She's got that jittery, shaky thing going, and she's too thin, and her hair is lank with sweat. And I know she doesn't need money for gas, or for a bus ticket, or for the little girl she says is waiting in a minivan she vaguely points toward. But I honestly wish I had some cash, because there's something intimate about being on the wrong end of a hustle when you and the grifter know and everyone around you knows exactly what this is about. I even consider handing her my good bottle of wine, cutting out the middleman. I can buy another, and why shouldn't she get to feel good for a minute? But I know it would be only a minute, and it would be the most irresponsible thing I could do. So I wave her away, telling her the truth. I have no cash to give, and she looks at me as if to say, we both know you're lying, which is ironic in so many ways. But I put the groceries in the back and fire up the engine. The seat's hot and sticky, and I think of my son, 21 at school in Boston, and wish I were in Boston at 21 again, bar hopping down Boylston Street in the early evening with my friends, breathing the salt of the ocean, and along with the stink of garbage cans and hoagies sold from food carts on the sidewalk. And I think of the last time I was there with my father. It was August 2021. In that brief stay of execution when the numbers were going down and people were getting vaccinated and we were all feeling a little hopeful, it made me reckless and so I got us tickets to a Red Sox game. I gave him his shot of Lovenox in the Prudential parking garage. He was having his blood clots then and we limped our way down the Fenway, the two of us talking about how good it felt to walk in the middle of a crowd again, to move with the wave and not have to think about where we were going just letting it carry us with it towards the banks of lights and the Sitco sun. And people happy and smiling at each other, groups of girls in summer shorts dancing in the middle of the street, recording it all on their phones. And how he spent the whole night complaining about the seats I got behind the net on the first base side, and a starting pitcher who let up three home runs in the first two innings. 
and the guy two rows in front who wouldn't just sit the hell down for Christ's sake. And we drank watery beer and paper cups, and he kept calling me Herbie for some reason. Herbino, he said, slapping me on the shoulder, and I let it go because whoever, whenever that was, I could tell that they were in a good place. And we cheered and we laughed. We even got up for the wave each time it came around. Because I think we both knew that all waves dissipate. And this was only a moment, but a hell of a good one. And the socks came back and won, and it was great.